Hello and a very warm welcome to British Guy Reacts. Now regular viewers, all three of you, will probably know that I, I made this channel for two reasons. So first of all to explore my fascination of history and second of all my interest in the United States, in the people and culture of America. So this is very much one of the latter type of videos. I'm going to react to what you shouldn't do whilst visiting the United States from, from Walter's World. It's, it's not a channel I'm that familiar with, but it's, it's got a good number of subscribers. I mean, I, I was meant to make two trips to um, to the US for work reasons in 2020. So that to LA and to, I think it was somewhere in Ohio. Now that got cancelled because of this thing called coronavirus, which apparently is a big deal over there. But I'm, I'm hoping to get back soon. Um, and when I do, I'm hoping this video will, will, will give me tips that stop me getting physically assaulted. And that, that's all I seek in any um, situation in my life is to avoid physical violence being directed at me. So, so without, um, without any more rabbiting on, uh, obviously the original video will be in the description. And here we go. Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark hey. with Walter's World. And today we're in Mystic, Connecticut, in a beautiful place here in the U.S. And today what we have mm. for you are the don'ts of visiting nice. the U.S. Because... Anywhere you go in the world, there's things you should do, but there's also things you shouldn't do. And sure. this video is going to just cover the U.S. in general, okay? And our first don't for when you visit the U.S. is don't touch the Americans. <laughs> Look, Americans really what? like their... <laughs> Sorry, I was not remotely ready. Don't touch the... So that's what I've been doing wrong. Walking down the street, sort of high-fiving and slapping everyone. Um, that I, I was not ready for that at all. I, I'm, I'm fascinated by the reasoning behind this. I, I mean, obviously, anywhere in the world, if you just randomly go and touch people, you'll get a negative reaction. But it is, it, it, what is particularly about Americans and personal space? I, mean, I think perhaps he's comparing it to certain European countries like sort of France and Italy where um, you know, people sometimes kiss on the cheek and that kind of thing, which I think would probably go down very badly in America. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I'm very, I'm fascinated to see what he, what he has to say for this. Personal space. It's like they have a bubble around them and if you get too close to them, mm. they feel very, 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 very uncomfortable. Okay? I, can, so I can get Make that. sure you give them yeah, a little distance when you are there, you know, because I know when I go to Italy and Spain <laughs> and stuff, like mark how's it going all this stuff and my american friends sometimes go wow Walk, walking down the street in europe is basically like um it, it's a combination of walking for a bar fight and an orgy at the same time that, that that's what european cities are like i mean i mean not quite but um yeah i i can see where the stereotype comes from oh they're really really affectionate like that's just how it is <laughs> here space is key the hmm. second don't i have for you is don't count on public transportation. Okay. Look, when we were in China and we were in throughout Europe and South America, we took buses and trains and planes and all kinds of stuff to get all over the place because public transport is really developed. Here in the U.S., you cannot count on public transport to get you a lot of places. Mm, yes, in big okay. cities like New York and Chicago and stuff like that, you can get around for the public transport. It will take you where you want to. I mean, a lot of um, Europeans don't realize just how car-centric American culture is by comparison to, to Europe. Um, I mean, I, so I, I've been to America a couple of times. The most recent time was in 2017. And I, I used the New York subway, which worked great. And I used something called a Bolt bus, which went from um, New York to Washington, D.C. But pretty much anywhere else to get there, you out of the big cities, you really need a car. Um, and it, in Europe, a car's helpful, but I mean, you can generally get by a lot better with public transport. So th this, this, to this totally makes sense. Um, America is extremely car-centric. Um, I mean, it's a, a bit, you know, very ingrained into, into the psyche, I think. I go, but a lot of towns, small towns, especially in middle-sized cities, the public transportation networks are not very good. And at night, sometimes it's not very safe. Hmm. So that is kind of a frustrating thing. So I've heard of things called Greyhound buses. Um, but I've, I've heard of, of travelers using Greyhound buses to get from, not necessarily like from one side of America to the other, but um, to travel widely with the United States. And I've always been tempted to do that, but I don't know if it's a really stupid idea. So perhaps comment below on whether um, whether using Greyhound buses is safe and realistic or whether I'm being delusional. Anyway, let's get back to Mr. Walters. Yes, you're going to probably have to rent a car when you come here, okay? Mm. So just have a heads up for that. And that kind of leads into the next don't I have for you is that is... Don't underestimate the size of the U.S. Yes. The United States, you know, continental U.S. is like continental Europe. It's huge. I mean, would you think of driving from, oh, I want to do, you know, go to from Lisbon to Paris and then go up to Thailand and then, and then head down to Sophia. No, you're like, that is insanely far. 
It's the same thing when you come to the U.S. I meet a lot of travelers that are like, oh, I'm going to fly into New York, grab a car, drive down to Miami to see Miami Beach, and then head over to L.A. I'm like, dude, you got two weeks? You're going to spend the entire time in cars. <laughs> the distances here are insane. So what I recommend is... That's definitely one thing I noticed about America when I was there. And I was only traveling around very, very limited parts of it. It's, it is ginormous by comparison to, to European countries. Uh, I mean, you know, you've got whole American states, which are significantly bigger than the whole of the UK, which is the country I live in. Um, and, and as a result, traveling times become become very... I mean, it, it, it's it's bigger than you necessarily think as well. So you, you kind of think of America and you go in Chicago and New York and Washington and Vegas and LA, but the, the amount of stuff in between is enormous. Um, and, and traveling around without knowing what you're doing <laughs> can be um, a very risky business. Picking a region, so oh, we're gonna stay here in New England and see New England, or we're gonna go in the Southeast, you know, go to Atlanta and Savannah and Charleston, things like that, or, or visit the West Coast. You do mm. that to get a better idea of the culture there and things like that, but also it's just the logistics things because it's so far between the places. And to go along with that, for Americans, a three to four hour drive, that's a day trip. Like my parents live three hours away. I will literally get up, go drive, have lunch with my mom, and then drive back home <laughs> just for lunch. Six hours. I think to, to me, that is completely like crazy. Uh, like I, a two hour car journey is a pretty long journey for me. Uh, like four hours, that, that, that would be like a holiday trip. You'd have to have a special reason. I mean, I mean, some people will travel far more, I mean, for work, or I mean, if you follow a football team um, or sort of soccer team as a supporter, you, you travel a lot. But I mean, for me, anything more than a two hour journey is kind of a big deal. So, yeah, I, I can see that, um, that there's really big differences in, between America and certainly Western Europe. I was in the car. No big deal. It's about seven hours. We start to think, hmm, that kind of is a long <laughs> drive. And we drive the entire way through. I mean, seven hours would be like from the tip of Cornwall to the other, the tip of Scotland, from one end of the UK to the other. Um, it's literally probably about the maximum drive you can physically manage to do in the UK without getting, unless you sort of deliberately go around roundabouts hundreds of times or something. So, um, yes, I, I can totally see this point. Okay, this isn't like, oh, I must stop every two hours and have a 15 minute break. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. We drive all the way through, okay? Mm. Now, my next don't for you when you come here is don't think that the sticker price is the end price. Look, in the U.S., we have sales tax. I know other countries, they have VAT, value-added taxes. They're already put into the price of products. So when you see, oh, it's $1 or 1 euro, oh, I only pay 1 euro. In the U.S., it is not like that. We have sales tax. So a certain percentage is added on to that product. And the thing is, I cannot tell you what the sales tax will be where you're going to travel because it's different everywhere. Aye. Cities, states, counties different products have different sales so i did not know about this and this sounds really important um because i i, I just assumed when you saw a price that was a price you pay and i'm one of these people who like pre-pandemic would sometimes try and get the exact change right whilst in the queue and clearly that would be useless <laughs> if i don't know how much sale tax i'm paying on top of it so that that's actually that's a really useful tip um don't 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 worry too much about counting your change out Sales taxes and some products don't have sales taxes. Some cities don't have sales taxes. Some have 10% sales tax. It can be different mm -hmm. anywhere you go. So if you're going to go get your dollar menu item at a McDonald's or a Culver's or a wherever, it's not going to be a buck. <laughs> where I live, <laughs> there's two cities right by where I live. One, it's going to be a dollar eight. The other one, it's going to be a dollar nine. So be ready for that. And it's not just the sales tax. Also, there could be the tipping on top. Uh, and that leads us yeah. into the fifth don't, and that is don't forget to tip. tip. Look, in the U.S., you tip 15 to 20% at a sit-down restaurant, okay? Yeah. Now, McDonald's, stuff like that, no, you don't, you don't tip at a fast food place. But if it's a sit-down restaurant where they bring you your food and stuff like that, you will tip them 15 to 20%. I mean, America has a way stronger tipping culture than, than Europe. Um, so, I mean, obviously, I, I keep I mean, I think thinking most of Europe, 10% is usual for a restaurant. Um, but certainly in the UK, you wouldn't tip at a bar. That would be seen as being really weird. Um, so I think American tourists often get a reputation for being incredibly generous because they, they come over and they, they start tipping in pubs. And they, they'll take your money. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> they'll take your money. But it's not normal or required. And if you tip 20% in a restaurant in the UK, that, that would be like 
fantastic service. Absolutely love the place. Uh, and, and, and I kind of assume that by association that some Brits go to America and don't really know the rules and then tip 10%. So we've probably got a reputation for being sort of slightly um, stingy bastards in America. Um, I, I, I know that if you don't tip at a restaurant, right, you can never go to the back of that restaurant for the rest of your life. And in fact, to be on the safe side, you should probably leave the state and just leave the entire United States to um, to ensure your safety. So I, I, I know tipping is really important to Americans. If you are in a group of six people or more, sometimes they automatically put the gratuity on there, mm, okay. which sometimes can be 18% or something like that. Look, when you come to the US, <laughs> there's a reason why the food is like so affordable. You're like, wow, it's cheap to go out and eat in the US. Mm. It's because there's kind of this understanding that the service fees and paying for the workers and the waitresses and stuff like that, that goes on to you the person eating there with the tips. So the food and stuff can be cheaper when you go out to eat. And I know a lot of people say, I don't believe in tipping and others tipping isn't the right thing. They should pay their people more. Well, if, if, if you want to pay more for your food, they can do that, but they don't. Okay. So tipping is something we do do here in the US. So it sounds like tipping is basically an essential part of the waiter um, and waitresses wage as they need, you know, it, it, it's not like an add on or an additional thing, which is kind of how it's seen in the UK. Um, it's, it's actually like a fundamental part of their earnings. I, I, I don't know what their core salary would be, sorry, salary would be. Um, but certainly that would explain why people get really annoyed if you don't tip. And I can totally understand the frustration with um, tourists who, I mean, from, 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 from different cultures who, not deliberately, but um, who, who don't tip as much and perhaps um, don't quite understand the culture. US, so do tip that 15 to 20 percent. Oh, also, if you're at a bar and you're buying drinks, you're going to want to tip a couple dollars here and there. Otherwise, the bartender might not be too quick to come back <laughs> and get you your next drink. I, mean, I, I usually find bartenders are not that quick coming back to get my drink um, everywhere, um, regardless of whether I tip or not. But that's probably just something about my um, vibrant personality. But I, I would definitely remember that. So you can sometimes in the UK buy, the, um, buy some of the drink, but it's not that common. So falling off of those tips, Quite what you need to realize is our next don't is don't be freaked out by the over-the-top service and free stuff you sometimes get in the U.S. Okay. Look, because of tipping and commissions and stuff like that, yes, there is a lot of over-the-top service here. But the thing is, in the U.S., the people actually are pretty nice and they want to help people. And sometimes for some travelers, if they come from countries where people don't get a lot of service sometimes, it can be a bit much, so don't freak out about it. Also with that is don't be freaked out with some of the free stuff you get when you go to restaurants. Look, if you go to a restaurant, I mean, certainly in my experience, um, the UK is way more repressed. So I, I don't know if that, I mean, as this guy said, I don't know if the tipping has something to do with it. Um, but, but like standard customer service in the UK would be like a hungover 20 year old kid um, who really doesn't want to be there and makes no, no effort to hide that fact. And you go to America and everyone's super cheerful and it's like, what, what, why? I don't understand this. You should be miserable. That's what you, you know, you're, that's what you're supposed to do. We, I've worked in shop jobs and you're miserable. Why are you not miserable? Um, so yeah, it, 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 it does seem to be, I think there's some truth to this. Um, and it's fascinating as to why it's the case. And is it just because of tipping or is it more of a general cultural thing? I don't know restaurant they bring you bread and water or chips and salsa and all those really good things mm. that's included in your meal okay oh. so if you're going to be buying something they're going to give you some free stuff it might be some bread <laughs> it might be a salad it might be a you know water it might be something like that so don't be like shocked like wait i, di I didn't order this bread i didn't mm. order this salad oh no that comes with your meal okay now the thing is though you can't just go in and get chips and salsa and walk out all right you have to, <laughs> yes. have to order some food when you go there now my next one for you is don't smoke cigarettes in the US. Hmm. If you're smoking cigarettes in the US, people will look at you like you're trying to kill their baby. Cigarettes <laughs> is like totally forbidden, like people really frown upon it, which is funny because when they talk about marijuana and stuff like that, people don't seem to care as much, but cigarettes, oh, you're trying to kill my baby with that cigarette two blocks away. So if you do smoke, make sure you try to find a place where you can smoke because a lot of ref In fairness, doesn't, don't cigarettes kill a lot more people than marijuana? I mean, is my very um, layman's understanding. I mean, within Europe, smoking culture varies massively. Um, so, I mean, the, the UK, at, where smoking used to be ubiquitous, has cracked down hugely. Um, I mean, it's illegal in, in any kind of restaurant or bar, and it's been, it's, it, it's very heavily discouraged. There are some other European countries, so like Switzerland I went to um, a few years back, and I was amazed at how many people were smoking. So I think it varies a bit by European country, or perhaps even by, by which bit of the country. Um, but yeah, but this, this isn't an issue for me because I don't smoke, but I will, um, 
I'll make like extra sure that I don't accidentally take up smoking whilst I'm in America. Restaurants, or pretty much all restaurants, hotels, stuff like that have smoke free. It's smoke free. Mm. So you have to go like 15 to 20 feet away from doing things. So that can be something. So I've come here outside my favorite liquor store to give you the next dope. <laughs> and that is don't try to buy alcohol unless you're 21 or cigarettes unless you're 18 or over in the US. They will not sell them to you. And the thing is, don't forget your ID. Mm -hmm. Because if you look like you're 40 or under, they may ask you for that. And don't get mad at them because if they don't ask, they could get in trouble and get fined. Sure. So don't be surprised because we've had friends that have come here, tried to buy alcohol and they're like, sorry, you, you're, you don't look old enough. Oh, I don't have my ID, too bad. And the thing is, it's not just a person buying. They might ask anybody with you, so make sure everybody has their ID if they want to buy liquor or they want to buy, well, they want to buy alcohol. I, when I went to, um, to university, um, there were quite a few American students in my university. And for a lot of them, because they, you know, they're, they're coming over, they're 18 or 19, uh, they're coming over. And for me, in, you know, they, they weren't used to going to bars and going to clubs. So a lot of them would get horrendously drunk um, at the beginning of term. You know, they, I, I guess the sort of thing that um, the British kids probably did about a year earlier when they first start getting into bars. But they would just get horrendously drunk um, and, and, you know, very slowly acclimatised that way. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the challenge age thing, we have exactly the same thing here, but it's, it tends to be challenge 21. So if you look anything in the region of 21, um, you'll, you'll get asked for ID, even if you only have to be 18 to buy it. They can also challenge us some really crazy things. So like I, I've been challenged for, and actually been stopped from buying plastic knives and forks, like the little ones you use in um, birthday parties, because technically they apparently count as a weapon and therefore you have to be 18 to buy them. Um, so yeah, that, 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 that probably says something about the UK and the, UK, the US's relative attitude to weapons as well. Um, but, but yeah, it, no, definitely the, um, the 21, it doesn't vary by state a bit as well, I'd heard. I don't know if that's the case. Perhaps you could enlighten me in the comments. Call or if they want to buy cigarettes. So just FYI on that one. Oh, that's also another don't I have for you is don't bother with a metric system when you come here. <laughs> we don't use, or sorry, we don't use meters. We don't use kilometers. We don't use liters. Mm -hmm. It is inches, feet, miles, gallons, uh, <laughs> pounds, things like that. And I'll put a conversion chart here to show you. So the, ironically, the UK is one of the few uh, other kind of imperial holdouts. So most of Europe is completely metric. Um, and I'm, I quite like metric because it's nice and simple, but the, the UK is in a complete mess. Half the time we use metric, half the time we use imperial. Um, so, so sometimes even for, um, for, for, for different types of quite similar things. So for example, uh, alcohol is served usually in imperial measurements in, in a pint, um, but, but generally speaking, but often liquid is all, and, and, and same with milk, milk is done in pints, but other liquids are quite often done in um, litres, so it, it's a, just a complete mess in the UK. But also I know that, I think our, um, some of our imperial measurements are different to some American ones, I think a British gallon is different to an American gallon. Um, I mean, certainly there's been some cases before of some quite embarrassing mishaps where people assume they're the same thing and they're not. Um, so yeah, so I, I come from a country where we have a really confusing system. So going to a country where it's a really confusing system, hopefully I can deal with that. But honestly, you may say, hey, how far is it to this next town? And they'll tell you, oh, it's like 60 miles. You're like, what's that? Just know, 60 miles, eh, it's about 100 kilometers, okay? So mm. just do that because the people here won't get it. I mean, I have people, when I'll tell them, oh, it's 100 meters away, they're like 100 meters. It's like 100 yards. Oh, okay. So make sure you do know your imperial system, okay? Because <laughs> metric, we don't do that so much here. The other thing I've noticed about Americans is they tend to use, um, or you tend to use, the um, the Fahrenheit system quite a bit, rather, rather than degrees Celsius, you have degrees Fahrenheit, which we we do also have here, but it's generally just older people that use it because kind of the, the, the newer system came in. Um, so I, I, there's been a couple of occasions where I've been like complaining about how hot it was, and I said, yeah, well, you know, it must be 35 degrees. And they've looked at me like I'm nuts um, because in, in Fahrenheit, I'm guessing that's probably like sub-zero or something. So yeah, there, 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 are, there are some interesting differences. Here. 
So our next note is when you do come to the U.S., there's a couple things you don't talk about, okay? Mm. One is gun control, and two <laughs> is politics, because no matter where you are, you will get people on either side of the spectrum, okay. and they will have an argument with you. So it's best just to lay off those topics, talk about the weather. Oh, wouldn't it be <laughs> nicer if it was sunny today, and we could go sailing? Yes. Now, I mean, the politics is presumably just is basically just good advice for wherever you travel in the world. Like, I mean, especially if you go to somewhere which has had some kind of armed military conflicts I've, I've been to um parts of the former yugoslavia but i'm not aware if you go in the world bringing up politics seems a really really risque thing to do and i mean, I, I keep it strictly on this channel for for a very good reason uh, which I, I don't want to alienate anyone or, or um, have, you know, only be um only be appealing to a certain section of the population that would be much better than discussing gun control or politics just putting that one out there for you right now now, my next note for you is don't assume that all the U.S. and all the Americans are the same. Because I know a mm. lot of people say, oh, you're a typical American. What's well, like saying you're a <laughs> typical European? Look, the U.S. has all kinds of different cultures, all kinds of different people, all kinds of different topography and scenery and stuff like that. And when you come here, don't assume it's all the same. You will see regional differences in cuisines and how people treat each other mm. um, and how everything looks, all kinds of stuff. So don't just think there's just one kind of American. They're all... Yeah, I, I don't think a lot of Europeans appreciate just how much kind of state pride there is in in america um i mean ha, ha, how much how many americans are sort of pr proud about their state I mean, americans generally seem to be more proud of their cities than europeans as well i'd say like you you, you get much you get a very strong civic pride in america um oh it, it varies a bit in europe um but yeah i i think a lot of europeans don't appreciate that the the, the kind of level of oh I mean, no i think that's a fantastic thing i think you, know, you should have more of it more local pride um, but yeah, and, and also then the cultural differences between states and between sort of different bits, I, I think is definitely understated. And there's a there's very stereotypical, stereotypical image of what American is, which I think is um, it is it's a very gives a very incomplete picture. Fat, slobby guys with ponytails. No, there's actually <laughs> a lot of skinny people in America too. Not just fat guys like me, <laughs> my buddy Jeff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there are those. So don't Love assume buddy, it's yeah. all the same. All right. So do go out and explore. And that's why I always say is if you're going to come to the U.S., go and explore different regions because you'll get a really different feel. Because going mm. to the southeast and seeing the, the plantation homes and, and going to see the, the southern towns down there versus going to the northwest and, and Seattle and Portland or going to San Francisco or go to the Midwest with Chicago and Milwaukee, you're going to have a very different feel, yeah. which is really a cool thing to do. And you start to understand is, wow, the U.S. does have a lot of different cultures within it, a lot of different feelings. So that, this is one of the things I really want to do is travel more around the US because I keep hearing about all these, these different places um, and like amazing locations, different cultures. The only place I've been to is Florida when I was a child and that was to Disney World or Disneyland, which, whichever one's in Florida. Um, so I, I'm guessing that's not quite the, the real America. There are probably a little, a few more Donald Ducks. And I've been to New York and Washington DC. So there's huge waves of the country I've never been to, and I would absolutely love to go, and I hope to one day. Uh, we will see if it happens. If, if it does, perhaps I'll even document it on this channel. Um, but it might, might be a little bit further in the future. Feelings when you go around here. And following on with that, I guess I would say another don't is don't assume there's no culture in the U.S. Because mm. there are a lot of cultural centers out there. If you go down to New Orleans, you see a very rich culture there. You go to New York or Boston. Here in New England, you have a very distinct culture. In the Midwest with Chicago, Milwaukee. You go to the West Coast. I mean, there's a lot of different culture here. Historic yeah. culture with the Native Americans or more recent culture here. I mean, you have all that here you can really take in. And saying there's no culture in the U.S., it's not really true because there are all these different cultural centers with great museums like the Art Institute of Chicago or the Met in New York, the Getty in LA. There's all kinds of stuff you can see and do when you are here for a mm. cultural trip. It's not just seeing beautiful landscapes and, and seascapes like we are here in Connecticut. There's a lot more to it than that. So this is one of the things that sometimes really annoys me. Well, it really annoys me about some Europeans. So I mean, like a lot of Europeans like me are, are very Americophile. Um, and certainly pretty much all Europeans are very heavily influenced by American culture. We watch American movies, uh, we listen to American music, watch American TV. But you do get some Europeans, a minority, but a minority that annoys me, um, who are a little bit snobbish about America. I, I don't know if it's because it's a younger country, um, but I, I, I just think that their perception is, is could not be more incorrect. Um, I mean, America has an incredibly rich culture across, you know, pretty much every, every avenue of culture you can think of. 
Um, and the, the kind of the, the attempt to downplay that, I think, is it's actually quite nasty, um, as, as well as being totally, disa to totally inaccurate. Now, my next don't for you is one that I kind of get a lot of questions about. We actually have a video on this, and then that is, don't think that how are you or how's it going is actually a question. <laughs> Look, when we say how's it going, how, you, how are you, these kind of things in the U.S., it's not a question, it's a statement. It's like mm. saying hi. Okay, just take it as a hi. Because a lot of people say, this. everyone asks me how I'm doing. When I try to tell them what I'm, how I'm feeling, they're like, well, I was just saying, how are you? <laughs> Here, how are you is just hi. Think of it that way. It's like in France. I mean, we have something similar. So all right is basically used in the UK. If someone in the UK goes all right, they don't really want to know how you are. They're not asking for you know the details of your mental and financial state. They're basically just saying hello. Um, and I know that can confuse some people because obviously it is technically a question. C'est va? C'est va? How's it going? How's it going? Mm. We're good to go. In Portuguese, to the bang, everything good. You answer back, to the bang, everything to the good. Bang. I love that. It's just, how are you? How are you? You move on, okay? So don't think it's an actual question, all right? <laughs> Now, another don't I have for you is don't expect a lot at the fancy hotels. You know, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to pay more money for this hotel. I'm mm -hmm. probably going to get nicer stuff, like a nicer breakfast, better Wi-Fi. Oh, no, 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 no. For some reason in the U.S., it seems like the nicer the hotel, the more you have to pay for the things you think would be free, like Wi-Fi <laughs> and breakfast. So don't feel like you have to stay at the fancy hotels. I mean, like, my experience with American hotels is really good, but maybe that's because I'm not staying in really fancy hotels. Maybe I'm like, I'm like... The a, a tier low enough down that I actually get like the free stuff that you'd expect to be free. Um, but yeah, no, I've, I've always been really impressed with American hotels. Because honestly, if you're going to be going out and exploring, you just need a couple beds, right? So stay at the hotels in the U.S. and the cheaper ones will give you free Wi-Fi, free breakfast, all these kind of things, which is really nice. Mm. So don't expect that from the fancy hotels. I will but avoid fancy hotels. Don't skip out on the local food. Look, we're here in New England. We're here in Connecticut. We've been having lobster and clams and oh my God, the New England clam chowder. Oh, my tummy is just like more, more. It's fantastic. When I'm in the South, man, Southern fried chicken, mac and cheese, barbecue. Oh my God. The food in the different regions in the U.S. are great. So don't just go to chain restaurants. When you go to your hotel, ask them, hey, What's some local restaurants around here? What's some locally owned yeah. and operated restaurant? I mean, that totally makes sense. And that this is one thing I'm guilty of. Um, I mean, you kind of, I mean, I've, I've been to America and you tend to, you go to a lot of the same restaurants change, I mean, American restaurant change, but they're the ones you re recognize from the UK. Um, so you go to America and like suddenly you're with five guys. And we think, well, I could do that in London. What am I doing here? Um, when obviously, as this guy says, there's always amazing local stuff, e even for relatively picky eaters like me, um, re really should make more of an effort. So you can go there and check out those places because they really give you a great experience. That and I find a lot of times amazing. those ones actually have better service than the chain restaurants because it's a mom and pop place where the owner is the ones helping you out. And that is really kind of a cool thing. Mm -hmm. Now, my next don't for you is don't get sick. Look. <laughs> Healthcare in the U.S. is insanely expensive. And just because you come from another country doesn't mean they're not going to find you for the bill. All right? So okay. if you're going to be coming here, make sure you get travel insurance or trip insurance so in case you do get sick or you do break an ankle or you do break an arm or something happens to you, your insurance will cover it. Now, you might have to pay it first and your insurance pays you back, but at least you'll get something back. Health healthcare here in the U.S. is insanely expensive. Okay? So make sure you're prepared for that. And I guess my last don't I'm going to have for you is one that – People actually got mad at me for when I lived in other countries when I told them the U.S. has 50 states. Mm. And they said, no, the U.S. has 52 states. <laughs> Look, don't think the U.S. has 52 states. The U.S. has... I didn't realize people did think that the U.S. had 52 states. How, how do people get 50? I mean, I, I, are they... Because I, I can understand why people think 51, because some people count Puerto Rico, which obviously isn't a state, unless they think of districts of Columbia, but... I don't know how you get to 52. 50 states, okay? Just just a heads up on that one. I'm sure that people are going to be commenting down below that when I was in school, they told me 52. Mm. No, there's 48 on the mainland, and then Alaska and Hawaii are 49 and 50, all right? So those are our don'ts for visiting the U.S. What are some of the don'ts? I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lovely even number. That's what I love about it. Uh, I mean, if, if Puerto Rico does get statehood, um, that will... It, it will make things a lot more awkward in terms of having to remember the number of states. So for, for those of us who are international, please keep it at 50 America. Uh, it's so much easier for us. 
you have for the U.S. Because I know there's more out there. I just want to get some of these out there to help out travelers heading to the U.S. Just so we can get things going. Anyway, if you like videos like this, we have stuff on what the don'ts of going to Russia, the don'ts of going to Germany, the don'ts of you know going to Brazil and things like that. And we really like helping travelers with honest travel advice. So if you like this video, do click that subscribe button. It means a lot to us and we put new travel... Well, I say I definitely picked up a lot from this video. I think my um, my objective of being able to travel around America without being physically assaulted is is now closer to reality. And as I as I mentioned at the beginning, that's all I want from any situation in life. Um, so that, that that that's closer to being realised. But yeah, though there there, there are some definitely some great tips. There's some things I quite a few things I knew, but there were a few I didn't. I like the sales tax thing threw me a bit. Um, so, so the, the, the thing about public transport, I didn't realise sort of, I knew, I knew it was a car centric society, but I didn't know quite how car centric it was. Um, so yeah, I, I hope you've enjoyed. If you've made this far, you are a gentleman and a scholar. As, as, as I've said before, I am fascinated by America. Um, so I, I'm, I, I'm an America far, there's, there's no point denying it. Um, I, so I, I, hope, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you again for the next video.